All right, so welcome back to, to the Erasmus series, to the podcast series, which I interview guys or people which I met over here in, uh, in Waterford, Ireland. And I'm really excited for, for today because I didn't, yeah, I was a bit anxious that I don't get another podcast guest over my course of my time here. But today is today. We are in a great scenery and I want to introduce uh, a good friend of mine. Ross Henley. Do I pronounce that yes, correct? It, yes, the, the that, last that's correct, yes. Nice okay, to see perfect. Honest. How are you feeling? How good, are you going good. On? I'm very good. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah, before we start, I have something for us. The, the, the audience might remember that it's kind of a ritual to have a cup of coffee here. Oh my God, thank you very much. <laughs> perfect. Uh, so, it, it is not a podcast without a coffee, so... We need do, we, do we cheer? <laughs> we do, yeah. Perfect. So let's have a sip. Oh, perfect. Good start. All right. So, Ross, it's good that you're here. Um, I'm really excited. We're in a great, great spot. Hopefully the audience is enjoying that as well. And maybe we start to talk a little bit about yourself, or what you're doing, or just your name and stuff. Yeah, so my name is Ross Hanley, and I'm currently living in Waterford City which is like the bottom of Ireland. The bottom? Well, like there, you can go further east or west, but yeah. like this is kind of like, kind of the very bottom in relation to like in the middle it of is. the country. Yeah, it is. And you, you grew up here as well? No, I actually grew up in a place called Carlow. What is it? Carlow. Carlow, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's about an hour's drive from here. It's about halfway between Waterford and Dublin. Okay, perfect. But you decided to go here then to, to study, right? Yeah, so Carlo has a college as well, but I chose to go to Waterford just because the fact that the course that I did was here. I, I did digital media marketing and I, I also got to move away from home, which was nice. Yeah, that, brilliant. We will talk about this later uh, in depth. But yeah, maybe we just, as an introduction, talk a bit, a little bit why we're here, or what we're doing here, or what even is this place here? Because yeah, that's a new, new scenery. So where we are here actually? So we are at Walton Institute. It's a part. It's the research kind of part of SETU, which is the college I went to, and uh, we're both here. Kind of started at the same time, yeah. and uh, I'm working as a marketing intern. At yeah, the marketing intern. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and that's actually how we met, as well. So I kind of referenced to my last podcast guest, to Nitish. We also met through through the course of the work here. So so it's pretty cool that this was kind of. The, the enabler for, for it, I yeah, would say so. Very organic. You organic, yeah, you can say that. And do yeah. you remember the first time we met? Oh, oh I do. It really? was actually outside on the on that green lawn there. We had a rounders day and uh, one thing led to another and we ended up having lunch together. Yeah, the exactly. In the arena, right? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, so maybe I should start while you're on here. Obviously, we're, we're friends now and stuff. Yeah. But I want to give the audience like a bit of... Um, yeah, a bit of a, a picture how the life here is in Ireland, because you're a grown up guy here. Yeah. You're um, an Irish guy, I would say. Yes. <laughs> uh, for a fact, and that's why you're the perfect, perfect guy to to explain stuff which is going on here. And I, there's lo loads of talk uh, to talk about. But my first question or my first uh, topic we could talk about would be what did you do on Wednesday? Because I heard like this is a. Uh, um, what do you say? A special day in Ireland, the Whitmas Day. Did you do anything special, or so I didn't do anything special because I'm finished college now. But when I was in college, Whitmas Day is what like is it exactly? Whitmas. Whitmas. Can you day. explain that for so a second? So it's like Christmas Day for like any any normal person would see Christmas, but instead yeah. of doing things with your family you spend a day in the pub in, <laughs> enjoying some local beverages maybe local beverages uh, that's and fun. uh you just go out and you start at eight o'clock in the morning and you drink all day long and then you go out that night okay so you start in the morning we also have an expression in germany we say like oh my god early shopping <laughs> no we can't say that so there's like you know the wheat beers yeah the wheat beers and we yeah. have it like with white sausages and yeah, and, and mustard sauce. You know anything about this? I know a little this bit, yes. I know okay. it's kind of traditional over, over in Germany, is it? Yeah, it is, yeah. And I think it's a, a very Bavarian thing, so where I'm coming from. Yeah. But let's, so it's Whitmas. And is it like, 
it's it's like a little Christmas for for the students and the college, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big day. It's kind of like all over Ireland, uh, like Waterford and SETU would be known for this day in particular. Oh, like right. Other colleges will come down, like students from other colleges, and stay with friends if they've any friends in kind of in the college. Yeah. And they, there's also like a like a tradition where you have like a, a cooked meal with your with the house you have like the people you live with like you have a, like a nice meal with them. As on well. that particular day? No. Uh, either that or the night beforehand, which is Whitmas Eve. So oh, oh there's Whitmas Eve as well. Oh, yeah, there's like, Whitmas okay. Eve. And it's very busy. You, it, uh, the whole place, there's people everywhere. It's uh, it, it can be very good or it can be like crazy. At yeah. The same time. Yeah. If you start like drinking in the morning, then yeah, it can go also the wrong path, maybe. But yeah. Because here in Ireland, Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's you're not allowed to to drink or have uh, beverages with alcohol in the public, right? Is um, technically, no, no, okay. you're not allowed. But it depends on where you are. Like, say, if you're in Galway, and um, like I was there over the summer, yeah, and like there's places around that would be like kind of public places, mm -hmm. and it, but everyone is drinking beer. But it's like kind of like it's on like a pier. And it's like no one's really like disrupting things, but if things went too far, yeah, the guards would probably come and stop it. Okay, but from a law perspective, you you would you could get fined for it. You could, yes. All right, yeah, because that was, I was arriving here in Waterford and in the first couple of days, and then I, I think I saw some guys who having their beverages in a in a bag or something that is not mm -hmm. visible. Yeah, and I was like, what is going on? Because in Germany, it's uh, obviously not the case. It, it wouldn't be like strictly enforced, yeah. but like, it would depend on the scenario you get caught up in. Okay. And may I ask you, uh, what, what's the most special day for you in, in the year? I don't know if Whitmas is even in that uh, league. <laughs> to, to, to for myself to or for an Irish person? Maybe both. Maybe first for an Irish person, what is the traditional Irish day? Uh, so yeah. the traditional Irish days for an Irish person, of course, would be St. Patrick's Day. That goes that goes without saying. Um, yeah. Christmas Day is probably one of the biggest days as well, because normally you get to go home if you're away or people from abroad come home. And okay. like you spend, like there's a few days, like there's a thing called 12 pubs where you go to 12 different pubs in one night. 12 pubs yeah <laughs> okay that's and crazy. then there's Stevens night and there's a few other days and um, apart from that they're kind of the two big main ones yeah I, the other ones would be kind of subjective to each person that would would be like um how would I feel about it but personally um I, lo I do love my birthday my your birthday yeah yeah cool. I like my birthday that's it that's always, <laughs> that's always a good day friends family coming over yeah, yeah. friends family coming over um and I have to say Christmas as well. I love Christmas. Christmas as well? Okay. Yeah. Because it's right before us now. It's like, yeah, a couple of days, two weeks, and then it's Christmas. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. Because, I mean, it's not like obvious, but it's really cold at the moment here in, here in Ireland, really chilly. Is that yeah. common uh, in that period of time, or is it like... It, it's, it's, it's a funny one. Like, it's always wet here. Like, after, like, October, it's always wet. And then like cold fronts can come in and make okay. things very cold. Like we have one at the moment for next week, but then warm fronts could equally come in. Like on Monday when we were went to the office, like, yes. it was such a nice day. Yeah, and exactly. And then two days later, there was frost on the ground and it could be snowing. Yeah, but to be honest, I'd rather have like cold water and sun uh, than like rain and wind. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. I, I cycle a lot and it's not fun when it's windy or it's raining yeah like this this is manageable and it's actually quite nice to look out at the frost underground and the sun kind of like coming up over the hills in the morning it's, it's nice yeah I, I feel like it's pretty cool and we have a nice nice spot here over at the Walton Institute okay so we talked a little bit uh, about important days in in the life or also in the life of, of Irish people maybe we should go back to to this Institute here and you said or you graduated like when was it like officially it was like a couple of weeks ago but when was your last day at the college probably the around the 14th of may which is actually my birthday as well that was kind of <laughs> it, it always ends up i kind of finished around that time 14th of may okay yeah so uh, i had a, i didn't actually have to do a thesis for my final for my, my final semester 
I yeah. had to do like a a few different projects which ended up like, taking quite a bit of time. A few, so not one project you have to do. I had five or six. All so right. So one for each each module, and each one is quite big. Like I had to make an ad. Uh, about a cream egg do you know what a cream egg is an advertisement or yes what? like uh, in um, after effects in a in, in the adobe suite okay but what was the topic uh i do you know cream eggs do you cream eggs in germany uh, cream i know cream it's a it's a cadbury's egg and it's filled with like this white goo okay and um oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big fan of them but they're okay and i had to make an ad where basically the egg went to jail and, uh, okay. and, got, and got out and uh, that was my final project and uh, did it uh, all it did work out, out. yeah it was uh, interesting it was difficult but the final product was uh, it was interesting to say the least yeah and you did it with after effects yeah okay so that was one of the projects and then we had a few other projects where similar enough to a thesis you have to write around five yeah. to ten thousand words or all right a bit less or a bit more yeah sure sure and then you graduated and have you did you have like um before you get it, did you have like a path you wanted to go or was it like, because I feel like I'm now at the end of my studies and I'm kind of, I don't know where to go, to be honest, or yeah. not really, because I I don't feel like I'm fully prepared to, to go out. And I mean, this changed due to the course of the work here, but what were your feelings there? You can, can relate to this? I, yes, I can relate. Um, with me I've had a passion for sports my whole life and in one particular over the last few years it was golf yeah so I've been working in golf clubs like in the shop like helping the the, the professional is the guy who runs the shop like, okay kind of help him sort things out and sell other things on a sales perspective or sales, was it like kind of like um, maybe uh, some logistical like I used to repair golf clubs as well um, oh, play yeah. golf like there's a lot of things that go into it, like booking, booking people. Okay. And like, I have a big passion for it. So when the summer came, I knew that if I get a job, that's kind of like, in one sense, your, your, your freedom as a student is finished. Then it is. And like that, you're in, you're into the nine to five working world. So I said, mm -hmm. for the summer, I would get a job in a golf shop. All right. So cool. I, I get to play golf for the summer and and just kind of enjoy my last summer as uh, having the freedom to do it i get you so you did not directly dive into like the nine to five job or no uh, profession mm -hmm. no. but you worked there as well so yeah so i, wor I worked there every day and um, i did about 40 hours a week which is close to nine to five but like 40 hours yeah so like every day after work i was I play golf or beforehand or on my lunch and but that's cool if you have like a, a passion for golf for sports and then you combine it with but maybe in the back of your mind was okay this is maybe not the the thing I was studying for yeah right yeah it's hard it towards the end of summer and I could feel September coming I was like yeah. right, maybe it's time I I had a look around and I was on LinkedIn one day and okay. I see a post for a marketing intern for Walton Institute mm -hmm. and because of my history with Waterford I have loads of friends down here my girlfriend actually is still down here I said I give it a, I give it a shot ended up getting an interview and, I, and next thing I'm working here cool in Walton cool so you applied but what we're not living here in Waterford no you I were back home I was back home yeah all right yes but um it all worked out I, I, I was lucky to get the job it was just by chance that I saw it yeah, sometimes in life, I think it is like that. Yeah. The moment you're you're least expecting it, something happens. So, not only in a in a work perspective, but I feel like, um, it's getting more and more like this. Okay. Yeah. And then you start working for Walton, and maybe just some some thoughts about how you do you like to work here, or what what were some some cool projects you worked worked on here? Yeah. So Walton is a very interesting place to work it's like it's a it's unlike like because it's public sector and it's research it's, yeah. not, it's not like your traditional marketing job like when I, I worked in previous role where it was all about sales and like I was growing social media I was running events and here it's like the the goal is to like show the world in a sense like what we do here yeah and the and the publications we have and the, the European projects that we do help the, re the researchers who are doing it like kind of get exposure yes so mm. 
it, that that is quite rewarding because when you when a researcher finishes her PhD or his PhD or has like a, a European project that they've just finished working on it's good to be able to highlight the work they've done and yeah. that's basically that's like our main role here is to kind of be the the stepping stone of like from the publication to the real world like for them seeing it and like we just help the researchers get their research out that's pretty cool you build like the bridge because i mean the researchers they drop papers they do stuff but you build like the bridge to the world like that's it yeah that's cool yeah it's, it's, it's it is very it's uh, rewarding and it's enjoyable and we get to go to some events as well yeah we, we myself and alex went to the plowing the plowing yeah yeah i the i, I that's funny that's really <laughs> funny because <laughs> As you said, we were at the plowing and they were inviting me as well. That was kind of cool because the, it's like a big agriculture um, event yeah. happening here in, in, in this area or in, in Ireland. And it's not far from Waterford. No, it, it changes location every year though. Yeah, and there are like championships, right? Yeah, that's what it's called. But we never saw the championships. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not 100%... I'm not 100% um, sure on the history of it but as far as okay. i know it started off as two farmers and like they wanted to decide who could plow a field better mm -hmm. so this grew into a championship of people getting together to plow a field yeah and that grew into like this huge event where you have like manufacturers of, of like farm machinery there and like equipment and i think it goes with farming and then that grew and grew and grew so and in the at the end of it you have colleges you have businesses you have like expos you have local like enterprise offices there yeah it's a huge event and this year was a world championship so it was like the biggest one we've had in years there's like 155,000 people a day how many 155 oh oh my god thousand people so. and it's like four days or no longer uh five days three it's three i can't remember if, i think it was three days yeah like a couple of days yeah so they're like massive a massive amount of people over over there yeah and i mean it's kind of, so we were there yeah and it's i felt like it was really cool because we were there with the university stuff and through the university but there was so much stuff going on there were cars there were like uh, obviously food and so much cool stuff to see for me, for myself as well to see like the irish uh Irish companies and also talk to people and stuff. So I have great memories to to that day. I, yeah. I enjoy bringing you around because for me, I've seen it before. I yeah. spent, I was there for the three days and the first two days I spent just like doing my job. I was like showing people what Walton, what Walton do in, in the tents. And then when Alex came, uh, he gave me a new perspective on the plowing because like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what I would take for granted, like he found interesting, like we went by, um, some traditional Irish music, do you oh, yeah. that? and like you were just so interested in it and like going around. It was I enjoyed showing you like the different things because I felt like a, a tour guide in, in a you sense. You were a tour guide for me, yeah. It, it was that was fun. Yeah, they had a stage. There was a stage and they played Irish music, and I always um, need to think about my mom because she always says, "Oh, the Irish music. You need to listen to the Irish music in the pubs and stuff." But I never had the chance to to have like live music. And then we were at the plowing and I, I saw that different instruments and that typical Irish uh, stuff and I was like wait we need to 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 go there so I find I found that that was really cool and yeah but you worked hard there right you were like from start to finish three yeah. days in a row <laughs> so I we got up at half five in the morning and it's when half five half five okay and half five is five thirty just for the audience yes this just, could be just to clarify just to clarify yeah yeah a very early day for me but it might not be for someone else yeah but uh so we got up at half five a.m and we traveled to oh, i forget the name of the location but it was in leash i think and um traveled there and uh walton is part of setu and this year setu became uh like the, it became university because it combined with Carlo College, where I'm from. So the two. Who's Carlo? Yeah, Carlo has a college as well. And they merged with them. They oh, I didn't knew this. They okay. merged together to, to form SETU. So this was an official launch, and at the plowing, we made a big deal out of that. We had a big tent, and we had kind of some interesting, like uh, 
interesting um things within the tent like we had like a, a, a car that one of the engineering students made we had drones yeah. we had gaming we had uh and uh, what else did we had we had robots and, and uh, oh yeah there was the, we had a, there was a sports um and a fitness type of uh thing going on where they had like a bike and a, a sensor yeah uh, the sensor where you, it's like the F, you know the f1 drivers when they they touch it like um reaction times and stuff you can can train them there yeah i think it was a cool setup it was honest. it was it looked it was fun it looked yeah. good as well yeah all right so we did the plowing and you said you enjoy your time here is that like i'm getting the sense you you enjoy it here and you you oh. feel like it's i feel like it's when I look at your job, I feel like it's very like flexible. One day you're doing that, you're at this event broadcasting stuff or, or, or showing some stuff. Then you're doing like, for example, interviews with employees, how they feel like here. And I feel like that's that's pretty cool to because it's not like one task every day. You calculate stuff or something. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you there. I, I never really thought of it like that because it's just the way my, my day to day is. But when you say it like that, like no day is the same. Yeah. We, we get different tasks every day and um, part of our job here is to find um, just new ways of going forward so it's not like you have like a script of uh, of work that you have like you kind of have to go out and find your own work sometimes yeah which can be difficult but at the same time it's rewarding when say you come up with an idea like i had an idea to uh to interview some of the staff was it your idea actually it was my idea yeah and it I, I made a content calendar for next year and like every week we have like uh, something that we're going to make or oh, cool. we have in the in the pipeline and I said every two weeks we're going to have like a member of staff that will be on our social media and we just ask them a few questions yeah and Alex was our was our first guest that video was ready to go and then I interviewed the gateway manager which is uh, is which is like the business part of Walton like that's how they kind of that's how they get industry into industry plus researchers like working together yeah and he's the manager of the, of the gateway that's cool because i feel like there's a whole room i feel like you do the right thing because in a research institute like this there are so many areas so many different areas and people don't know this yeah. actually i'm doing like apps for hospitals mm -hmm. you're doing like all the marketing stuff then there are the researchers who, who work on state-of-the-art technology basically it's it's crazy the one works with 6g like the new wireless uh, mobile communication the other one on satellites and i was like it's crazy like, yeah did, did you get the tour on your first day or is it, it was actually like two weeks after after i started and isn't it like they bring you into this room and it's our mixed reality lab uh, yeah. and there is like it's actually made in germany what it's the bot scan it's a 3d printer 3d scanner and there's 87 high definition cameras in it ah you mean that room right yes ah yeah I, and mm -hmm. when you open it up it it looks like a teleporter it looks crazy yeah it looks like a time machine yeah <laughs> Go and, ahead, we come back. and there's just some crazy crazy technology in this place that yeah you wouldn't even know was possible like yeah and all touching points if you talk if you think about technology they cover like all the touching points you have virtual reality augmented reality the whole uh reality stuff and then you have like the researchers who who work on interesting topics i don't mm -hmm. know everything about it or i didn't talk to anyone but to everyone but the one i talked about he he was he was saying he talks about this wireless communication i was like and on satellites and i was like oh, man mm -hmm. that's crazy it and is I, I wouldn't be surprised if there would be a rocket launching over there in the field <laughs> no i would i wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. I think there were no. That was in that was in Carlow College. Okay. I, I've seen um, model model rockets. Really? Yeah. They're working I, on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Like some of the stuff to do here, like they do health, data, cybersecurity, agriculture. They do uh, AI, quantum communications. They do, they do so many things, and like yeah. the the people here are so passionate about what to do, and they're they're very very intelligent as well. And it makes for a great place to work. Yeah, it is. And from a marketing perspective, I think your work is not. You always have work here because mm -hmm. there's so much. There's so much to to present and to to go in. And 
if you like present Walton Institute in like a really cool manner, I think it's also is profitable for the funding aspect maybe because if you do an impact on on social media or on like on a general basis, I think it's it's pretty cool. Like some of the, some of the things we we do here, like has a really cool impact on the way like some businesses like we do a lot of work with agriculture and like there like there's apps that we've made that like help get you grants because when you take a picture of say um a hedgerow or a field and you yeah. show that's been growing and you have left it over the course of the year the government will give you money or like there's other things that are like like they work on like um how to like make milk like take different enzymes in or out and ah, yeah mm -hmm. and make it like um so that you can have like a, a customized milk that helps with like depression or, or something and the things they do it's it's kind of crazy what they do so that's that's kind of the hard thing to do sometimes in my job okay it's because you you get 6g communication publication and the the, the english is so difficult to understand and from the paper yeah from okay. the paper it's, yeah and it's like it's very like uh it's 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 very scientifically written and it, it's, it's hard to kind of break that down into a format that like would that like other people outside walton would understand you have to simplify a lot of things right yeah but yeah if it's so technology technological technological advanced it's kind of hard because there are like uh, terms which and, uh, and you explain that technology and, and you don't want to take something out that's important as well yeah so you have to kind of that's probably one of the harder things about getting used to working at walton is kind of understanding the balance it is yeah but i think it's it's really creative that was uh, when you were, were like explaining your stuff that not, not every day looks the same and there are so many diverse fields which we operate here there's a there's a lot of room for creative creative work and i, I like that because Oh, I have this idea. I can set this up, and I think the the, um, the executives or like from a management perspective, they also give you the chance to to implement your ideas. You know, mm -hmm. you said you want to do the interviews, and I think there was no one who said like, no, we don't do this. We never did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of kind of cool to 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 have this that, possibility. That, that's very true. Like in my like in my last job and other jobs. It, it wasn't as easy to um to do these ideas yeah like if it was a good idea and it made sense go work away but like if there was something like a little bit abstract that it wasn't like clear cut then it might be a bit more difficult yeah. like whenever i we meet myself or my boss has an idea we go into the one room we get a whiteboard and like we draw we draw everything that we think would work yes and it's it's a uh, it's it's an enjoyable process yeah i feel like that as well all right, so now we have talked a lot about the work and I, I think it's really interesting also for, for, for people to hear that because back in Germany, I didn't get in touch with that many research institutes. So mm -hmm. it's really cool for myself as well to see how things go there. And there are a lot of PhDs who are working on their paper, like our last guest on the podcast. Uh, check it out, by the way. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, no, I'm kidding. And yeah, so maybe we dive a little bit into that studying abroad topic okay because i'm an erasmus student here we are in the erasmus series and my first question would be maybe did you do um a stay abroad during the course of the studies or what are your your thoughts about this um i uh, myself i didn't actually personally go abroad and i do regret that now that i've seen alex and his experience uh, instead like you have a choice of going on work placement or going abroad to study and um I said to myself, well, I would love to go abroad, but I think that'd be good to get experience. But yeah, the way you've kind of gone abroad and also worked, I think would be a, a great option as well. And I guess, I think I might have been a, a bit scared to get out of my comfort zone in a way as well. Yeah. I, I might have not fully, like I, I knew I wanted to do it, but I wasn't willing to commit to actually doing okay. it. Okay, but that's the best indicator that you need to do it. Yes. You know, if you if you feel like you, you really want to do it, but there's the, like the fear and the anxiety, mm. you know? Yeah. But I think it's never too late because I, nobody even, no, not nobody, but I think it's not that common to do the bachelor thesis in, in uh, going abroad. 
because no. normally um, students from Germany they go and do their do courses and I'm like at university and the, the whole Erasmus people out there and I was like I was saying th thousands of times I don't actually take courses here I'm doing my thesis and they're like well, what are you doing you work here and stuff and I think it stands similar to what you have said it's the work placement mm. what I'm doing here yeah but this leads to my next, next question what do you uh, if you could choose would you rather work somewhere else or having like the study experience to do classes in a in a foreign country i think the hybrid say two days in maybe two days in college three days yeah. working because i think the experience you get from working is 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 will stand to you better than any any education will but the education yeah. is so important to like understand how to work so for sure yeah and so it would also nice to like be able to have kind of a little bit more time during the day to explore the college and like kind of meet new people while yeah. you're abroad as well i think that would be important so i think a bit of both when you would be great that's cool because i also um I also thought like this because I really uh, I think work as you have said working in a country abroad that's like the best experience because you are the whole day you are exposed to the foreign language and stuff you know what I mean mm -hmm. and yeah so I think in terms of if I had to choose again working or or studying hmm, that's actually a good question I think I would choose the working part again because it's it's kind of difficult to combine it because yeah. we do either we do an internship abroad or we do like the studying studying uh, experience but if i need to choose i would i would go for the internship because first of all it's good for your cv yeah if you is. if you get the chance to to work in an international environment to talk to people and to kind of as you said leave your comfort zone and really really do work in another country but yeah, for me, it was like a no brainer because I wanted to go in an English country. Mm. And I thought about this the other day. There is not that much. Uh, you cannot go in too many places, which are speak, which is an English speaking country. Mm. We have the UK. Yeah. Which is now difficult with the, the Brexit stuff. That's true. Yes. And what else is there? Of course, uh, America, USA, yeah. but it's kind of expensive. Yeah. And uh, can Canada as well, oh. but there's parts that would speak French as well. Yeah. Um. What are, what are the countries? Because Austra Australia, Australia. Yeah, but but these are all we need to pay for that stuff. So we need to pay for 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 studying there or the fees. Yeah. The tuition, and if you need to choose, because I'm interested in if you had the chance to go abroad, what would you pick or what would your approach in terms of choosing the university or choosing where to go? So, if I was doing a master's, I would love to go to um, maybe the Netherlands. I've always, All right. I've always found um, that country interesting. Yeah. Germany is also on my radar. It should be. Yeah, and if I don't do a master's, I, w I would like to move to somewhere in Europe, maybe in the next year or two, for a year to just kind of have a similar experience to what you've had. Okay. Open your eyes, kind of have a few challenges, go out on your own, and see what see what happens in a sense and yeah yeah i'm not sure really where i would go any suggestions on where i could yeah, go yeah you, you said it already like netherlands i think it's a good good place to go yeah because a friend of mine or a friend of my girlfriend he he's all also no it's belgium actually <laughs> i mixed it up but I, we visited them and it's really cool because yeah the english english language is also very prominent there and you don't need to speak like the foreign language in university and stuff because I think it's a huge leap to do another language as well, you know, if you if you go if you go somewhere. Yeah. But I would definitely recommend it if you have the chance and if you have the time as well, because there are different stages in the life of, of people. Yes. And I think I think that's that's like the best thing you can do. Because apart from the professional experience and the professional growth you do on the personal growth it, it's it's something different mm. because you you're completely on your own you need to do everything on your own and watching your expenses you know searching accommodations doing laundry doing uh groceries i mean for me it was kind of a, a big thing but that's cool 
what I wanted to say is professional growth and the personal one. That's, these are two domains and you can have it in the span of a couple of months to, to, to have this experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, as you said, like the personal growth of like looking after yourself, the responsibility yeah. and actually like that side of it, but also like the cultural aspect of it. Like you've come to Ireland and like the way we do things here, like I take for granted, but like I'm sure you find some of the things we do very strange and like some of the food we eat might be strange some of the habits we have kind of the weather yeah like yeah everything about it like even the way we work so for me i take all this for granted because i'm used to it but i'm sure what what did you find difficult to come to ireland difficult so i think as you said you need to get used to the stuff which is different but for me this this opened a whole nother perspective so i was like wait a minute it's not common to to start working at seven or eight in the morning mm -hmm. because here I, I feel like the the official starting time is like at nine right and the other day i was i was waking up a, a bit early and i wanted to go in a, a cafe in the morning to to do some stuff and nothing was opened they all opened at eight or nine and i was like that uh, that's strange and this was like a week ago but really, really what time do they open in germany like the coffee is like it's i'm not i'm not sure like six to seven so very early okay and that was like the first thing i was really surprised is the the shift from the working times mm. because back in germany there are guys who start at six there are guys who start at seven obviously it depends on the um, on the the field you're working in because i don't think like in construction or in like a more um practical sense they all I think they start earlier than yeah, nine, I, do, I would yeah. say so. Like my friends could be up at half five. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's that's kind of similar. But if you talk about um, an office environment, it's like one and a half hours later, I would say. The start yeah. of the start of the day for in general. The, the one thing, um, like my last job, that started at like eight to half eight. Okay. And like, well, it wasn't really eight o'clock. It was like more like half eight most, yeah. most of the time. Like, <laughs> okay. If we're, if we're being honest. Um, I think each business kind of sets its own but like i would say nine o'clock would be like a standard nearly like yeah there would be like i'd say maybe like 65 percent of businesses might open at nine yeah and then or like in in like kind of professional in the environment like there would be places like shops that would open at eight and depending in dublin they might open at seven yeah it kind of depends on demand as well you know so yeah it's that's it's a strange one that yeah, that's that's the first difference I, I noticed here, and then obviously the, the the if you talk about opening hours, the grocery opening hours are also very different, mm -hmm. because we have like Aldi's and Lidl's, which we know from Germany, yeah. but they are always open till 11, 10 or eleven. Oh really? And in Germany, they close at seven or eight. Do they? Yeah. So I found myself oh in the evening, what should I do at 10, uh, 10 p.m. And I was like, yeah. I can do my groceries now. Yeah, and this was completely different to 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 like the routine or the stuff in Germany because it's like planted in your head that the groceries uh, that they close at that that amount of time because you felt like this your whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's an interesting point. And yeah. like I know from my from my mom, for example, um, she works in the bank in um, in Kildare. It's a good good two hours away from here. Okay, and she gets in at like eight o'clock in the morning and like she she could be working till like eight or nine o'clock at night when she gets home because she has work to do. Yeah. So like because of that, like she ends up going to bed at like two o'clock every night in the morning because that's when she gets to relax. So I say there's like Oh man, okay, that's Hey, when you say it like that, I feel like in Ireland like we have um it's like socially acceptable to just like stay stay up later. Like what would your average time going to bed be? My average time going to bed. Yeah. What time is so you I'm I'm a more the morning person. <laughs> That's funny because in Ireland it, it shifted a bit because I always six to seven I, I got up, but there were times where I woke up at half half eight and then catch the bus. We we all always take the bus at nine to, to this institute here. And but normally I want I really try to get up early and I feel like in the morning I'm the most productive. Mm. So yeah, I, I cannot stay up late. So after after 11 or after 10, I don't do anything productive. I 
found myself uh, watching uh, watching some stuff I don't want to watch to be honest you know what I mean I know what you mean scrolling that stuff and yeah. yeah that's where I have to battle a bit my, my, my inner self but yeah I try to, to get up early I don't know what's your take on this I've always been a bit of an owl when it comes to going to sleep a yeah. night owl night owl yeah, yeah. I, I didn't say that correctly but like I could like my my kind of evening routine looks like I get home I cook dinner if I have training I go training if I don't have training I I do I might have some work for like um for I do some work outside work for like my mom's friends and all if it comes to like building websites and things yeah um and if I don't have anything like that then I'm with my girlfriend looking at Netflix and then at 12 o'clock every night everything's off and then 12 o'clock <laughs> and then we put a podcast on to go together with your girlfriend yeah yeah we to go to sleep together we listen to one oh nice and you do like this like a uh, to get to the sleep routine yeah <laughs> but the problem is if it's too interesting oh, yeah, you're, you're, it's like you're like i need to turn it off and it's one o'clock and you're like okay now we need to go to sleep and it takes another half an hour to go to sleep so it could be half one before you go to sleep like. what type of cup is it like a funny podcast or is it like very where you need to think about it as well <laughs> um so we looked at like true crime like ah oh, yeah like she likes serial killers i'm i i'm kind of interested in it as well so either serial killer or something like that <laughs> okay <laughs> go to bed yeah and then there's another one called the blind boy podcast and mm -hmm. um, he's a he's this guy from limerick and he speaks about like some like abstract things like but he's he's quite intelligent the way he talks and and he's from limerick limerick oh, yeah cool. he, a, he actually Hello has a go. live live show in waters in january or ah. february i think Gonna go to it. And what's the topic there? Uh, I'm not sure what his topic is, but like the no, one like in general, what what is he so talking about? The one I was listening to listening to today was about uh, custard creams. <laughs> no, hold on, like custard <laughs> creams, which is a biscuit with like little like um like cream in the middle. Okay. And the CIA. And the CIA. Yeah, and it starts off talking about like the history of custard creams okay and on the, on the custard cream there is like a pattern that looks like like a, like some old iron work from like the 1800s okay and it goes down that rabbit hole and somehow he ends up talking about plants actually you no know, he this guy in the 1970s made some electronic music mm -hmm. that was meant to for plants to listen to because he read about a CIA um uh, um research where mm -hmm. a scientist um, hooked up a plant to a polygraph and then when he thought in his head about like destroying the plant the plants and the polygraph went up and down so then he started conducting different experiments where he would have shrimp in a in a bowl that would be dropped into a pot of boiling water that mm -hmm. was connected to a flower in a different room and he would leave because he didn't want the flower to to ah, okay to uh, to to pick up his signals mm -hmm. and he found that when the when the shrimp went into the boiling water the polygraph went and then like he would destroy he would like stomp on a plant and then he would go into a lineup of people and then somehow the plant would pick him out in the lineup this was in the 1960s when the cia um. was in cold war and they were investing money into some crazy things like so that's the type of thing I was, I was listening to this morning. Ah, okay, cool. And you do it as a, as a sleeping routine. That's cool. And you do like the snooze then? Isn't yes. there the snooze ha option? Half an hour snooze every time. And that's the thing? Yeah, half an hour, yeah. And do you get to the end uh, regularly or no. sleep in before? Oh, I always get to the end. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then you know it's sleeping time now. Yeah, my brain's like an old computer. It takes a while to turn off. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean... If you spend the whole day, your your head is full. I always yeah. need that, but I think it's kind of cool. To to and if you do it together with your girlfriend, yeah, she always nice. falls asleep pretty quickly. Really? Yeah, but uh, it is nice to to be honest. We both we both have an interest in doing it together. Like it's something that we cool. share. Cool. And you do it over your smartphone or a speaker? Hey, just my phone. Yeah, just the phone. Yeah, yeah. Then you can do it quickly, right? Yeah. That's cool. All right. So. What I wanted to ask you about is, you mentioned that sports is um, a huge deal in your life, yeah. I would assume. And we talked about your little golf uh, career, but I think you always play golf now, or you still play golf? Well, I started off my whole life, I played like football, aka soccer. That's my, that, was my, that was my first love. And I, um, 
I, I was meant to go to America. I got a scholarship to go when I was younger, but it didn't work out 100%. And, um, but I, you were there. I no, I didn't go. I I end up. I had tried. I went to a few trials. At the trials you did, yeah, right. Yeah, and um, I ended up getting talking to a college called Mount Aloysius in Pennsylvania. Oh. And they offered seventeen thousand euro to to go, but it was thirty four grand a year to go. So I would have had to put the other, whatever x amount of money it was, and it was ah. just before COVID. And if I got injured or didn't play well, it would have gone. It would have gone down. But if I played well, I might have got a full one. So yeah. it just didn't work out in the end. But it worked out for the best. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and um, after that, I played a bit of um, college football. We got to the All Ireland final, which is like a big deal. Oh. We lost to Carlo in the last minute, and they're the guys I used to play against in, when I was growing up. And then after that, oh. I kind of stopped playing playing soccer for until for for three years, and then oh, crazy. yeah, over college I didn't play any, and I started getting to golf. And I got I got down to like um, an eight I don't know, like nine was my lowest handicap. And then there, this year in September, I, f- I fell back in love with soccer. And myself and Alex have been have been training together every every. He's very good, by the way. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's like he's like Fabregas. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. And you're like, uh, what are you like? You know, Leroy Sunny. Yeah. You that guy? I'm Leroy. Yeah. Like right. a winger, fast winger. I will take that tall guy yeah All right, we were in training one day and Alex got the ball he turned like three players and then made a run and I heard one of the guys go he's like Fabregas <laughs> and I just I didn't say it in the training I'm yeah like, oh, no. he, he didn't hear it and I heard him say it and I was like he's like Fabregas I was like god this man but why Fabregas he's like he retired but but he was he was a good your, your play player. style I guess was like him okay yeah I would take it as a compliment is that a compliment yeah oh definitely nice nice it's thanks not, a lot. It, it who was that actually oh, I can't remember it, it was one of the Waterford guys okay yeah but it's funny but I thought I thought that was I thought I was good <laughs> yeah so we have like this is also which uh, like bounded our friendship a bit definitely, that we yeah. that you invited me to that um that football football game not football game what am I talking about to the club yeah and I ended up uh, having like regular sessions with them so it was cool for me to stay stay in shape and yeah. also uh, kick the ball because I came here and I didn't play for I think one one month about that yeah month and or one and a half and then you were like changing changing over here or yeah. moving over here and to the club and I think that was pretty cool because it was like every Tuesday we have the training and I saw like for me, it was very interesting to see the differences also between the football yeah. in Germany and the football here in, in Waterford. And I, I'd be yeah. interested to hear more about what you have to say about that because I find that very interesting myself, like the differences. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about this a little bit before because obviously, yeah, I don't know if this is so comparable because you know what annoys me a bit that we have no goalkeepers in training. We haven't. We haven't. I don't think we. Where have. are the goalkeepers? Is there already goalkeepers? I'm not sure. <laughs> Do I'm they not, play? That, okay. That's a good point. Like uh, there, there hasn't been one goalkeeper. I don't think at training. Okay, because in our training sessions back home, I feel like we all we always have like uh, 45 minutes uh, warm up and passing and uh, like uh, games for like four versus four or five versus five and then you always look forward. Oh, now we can shoot on the goal. The goalkeepers there. We have the the final games, the final practice and. I feel like that's a bit missing for me because we do yeah. like intense sessions, sprinting and our our games. I don't know how you say it. If you play like eight versus eight in a field, how do you call this? Um, like uh, small sided games. Yeah, something like yeah. this without goals and just. Yes, yeah. like we all pos- oh, possession. Yeah, possession games. Yeah, yeah. keep yeah. possession. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. And that's I think that's pretty cool and also similar. We play a lot of this in Germany as well. Two teams or even three we did it like to change one one team in the side to play against each other but yeah i miss the goalkeepers the, the one thing like about i feel like football in ireland is like you kind of have to uh you have to like grow organically and progress like yeah like in training they'll teach you how to run pass the ball like the basic fundamentals but as you said like we've never done a training specifically on how to shoot or how to like how to do like use triangles do a few one two passes set up each other or like kind of yeah like some fundamentals like 
the the back and the middle know how to play, but connecting the top, yeah. the final third, there's nothing really there. Like good that you mentioned this because yeah. from a tactical approach or how mm. different formations, how do you act as a fullback as a when this happens, yeah. you know, we kind of in Germany always it depends on the coach as well, but you play you do this like on a stand you you sort the players on the field and then you um anticipate situations or you build situations for example if a, a winger coming there what what is the midfielder what is he trying to do what does the striker do what does the the fullback and the center back do so very uh, much more tactical yeah I, you know what i mean and i, I feel like that's a, maybe a bit missing do you know it like it really depends like well, i was training with rex reviews when i was like 18 for a while like okay around a year and that training it was it, that, that's like the highest le like level of football you can play in ireland at that age and oh really at that at that at that level it was like it was a lot more like that but say back when i was playing for a club like and we were doing well like we had quite a good club team yeah i i, I would thought i was taught how to press but like you said something to me one day like i was like like say if the if the if the pull back gets ball I go around him and I make sure he can't go back. Yeah. But I'm doing that on my own. But if I know right, if I press you there and then you know okay, if I do that, if I press him this way he has to go. It's yeah. like working yeah, yeah. I, in with one mind that You know what the other one is doing and then you can uh, can can set up your action, yeah, I get you. Like unless you just have a good bond with some that's not gonna happen or it happens by accident, like but yeah. that doesn't happen here, like. Okay. But you mentioned you played for this Wexford club, which was more advanced. How yeah. ma how much did you train in a week? So that was twice a week, and I did it. I I was never fully signed to them, but I was trained with them for a year, and I played it like, like a handbag was maybe four or five matches with them. Okay, and uh, it was good. Like I at that stage is when I was going for my scholarship, and I, I was asked to train, and uh, I was like taking it very serious. I really wanted to get signed. Yeah, and. Uh, like my progression through football is always a bit of a late bloomer so then when i got there like there was like small things i didn't have like i say someone if the if the midfielder was passing to me like i'd hold it up instead of giving little flicks like and it was just kind of iq just ha i hadn't progressed enough mm -hmm. at that by the time i got there like i, I was always able to run and like I'd, I'd be athletic but just like kind of the the football iq wasn't fully there like the game okay, wasn't gotcha. slow for me but trade twice a week there it's about an hour away from my house and like we we do astro we do it on the pitch like we used to have practice games against the, the under 17s like we also played against some like high, like high level teams within wexford and uh, we used to play against i remember scoring a goal i was a really nice header against the uh, <laughs> guy i think it was uh, the under 17s we beat them and that was what like, we should be we should beat them like, we were under 19s at the time oh uh, you were the under 19s okay cool and then uh yeah, and we used to train in a place called Bunk Clody, and then I just got a message one day saying, look, we, we're not going to be signing yet, unfortunately. Okay. And then that was kind of, that was a big bummer, you know. It's always tough when you get that message, and then, like, it was around the same time the, the scholarship in America wasn't working out. Oh, man. And I Things just, got to get it in. Mm. It, was, it was like this, and then it was like that, and then I was like, okay, I don't know if, I, if I'm really bothered that much anymore. Yeah, and that's where you stopped for, for a bit? Well, I played football in, in college, and uh, I met one of my friends, Jesse, there, who comes train with us. And yes, we had we had a lovely team. Like we really had a great bond, and like we went all over the country. Like we'd be in Limerick, which is one side, then Cavan, then Carlo, then Dublin, and like we were beating teams everywhere. Oh man, that's cool! It was cool. a great feeling when we we were playing Carlo in like the last uh, in the last match in the group stage. It was nil nil, and like, I got the ball at the halfway line, and I put the ball across the pitch wing a guy and score a goal in the last minute to win oh my that god that was a highlight and then in the final of the of the of like kind of all the colleges we got to the final and we were playing against uh carlo mm -hmm. and they were good that day and they ended up beating us in the last minute which was unfortunate but that's the way football goes but is this the college football then yeah this it was college football yeah I, I like this because i so over there there's a football pitch and the arena and stuff and I really like the, the the nature because we don't even have this in Germany to play the colleges against each other. Oh, you really? go there with the bus and play against. I like this so much because it's such a bond then, yeah. and such a community in your college. Mm. And I think that's very, very, very cool to, yeah. to have like, as I said, the community. And I kind of this this 
this is really you know, I, I know it from a from a Germany perspective I only know it um, from the movies like the American movies or the college football and they play against each other and everyone is had their pride about their, yeah, their college yeah. and stuff and I was really this was n not nostalgic but this was pretty cool to to see here they're getting out of the bus everyone has their sweater yeah. water for it or uh, what the hell they they're playing for and that was pretty cool to see this I was really on it I'm really not in Germany anymore, so... Yeah, yeah. If we talk about the differences. Yeah, so, like, co like college sports, like, um, like there'd be multiple different teams, like basketball, Gaelic football, which is a national sport here, yeah. and then hurling, which is another national sport. Mm -hmm. um, we have we have soccer, rugby, we'd have... We, there's a golf team in some colleges, and there'd be different leagues, and depending on the size of the college, like, that would kind of be what bracket you're put in. Yeah. And... Uh, you go around playing different colleges and like and yeah, there's like knockout stages and like normally it's like a small league and then you get into get past it and yeah yeah it's fun it's really enjoyable because like every wednesday you'd have a match and like you, your team would be there you, you get up and like you, you have gear you go to the bus you get free food it'd be, oh. it'd be fun like it was there were some really enjoyable times and like you go across the country play some team yeah and like it was normally very cold because it's in winter and it was uh i had some great memories though yeah but i'm curious is this like a voluntary thing you do or do you have to pick a sport in college no you don't have to pick a sport you just go to trials and then like you get assigned team and then you're 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 playing then ah it works like this All yeah right. cool it was enjoyable now yeah and you kind of touched on it a, b a bit so football or soccer is not like the the, the a huge the, the, the biggest uh, sport here mm. um it's more i don't know if hurling or gallic football what do you think is uh more famous over here so it's uh i would say football is number one but her football yeah fo really? well not soccer you see we call football ga is gaa right so that mm. is hurling and football but football and soccer are two different things but okay people will call soccer football as well but football is like football is gaelic football Oh, okay. When you talk, say football, you mean Gaelic football. Okay, I'll okay. say soccer if it's soccer then. Uh, yeah. So Gaelic football, it's it's similar enough to. Um, well, first of all, that's number one, and it depends on the county you're from. Mm -hmm. Like I'm from Carlow, and like the northern part of Carlow is all football. The southern part is all hurling. And oh, really? That's interesting. Each place depends. Waterford's hurling, and a lot of Munster would be kind of hurling. Uh, Kerry would be would be football mainly. Mm -hmm. Galway would be hurling, Kilkenny would be hurling, Dublin would be football, Killary football. Like it depends on the place and uh, football is in your local town, that is everything. They, yeah. They love football. Like that is that is the Gaelic football, right? Or ga just ga, hurling of yeah. football. That's like the lifeblood of the town. Like Yeah, but that's so funny. Because I was taking my flight like a couple of months ago here. And I was looking at the fields, and I, w I saw the goals. Yeah. And then they have the like the prolonged uh, post. Yeah. Like, what the hell is that? Why do they have the? <laughs> yeah. But that's the main thing about Gaelic football, right? Yeah. So Gaelic football and hurling use the same pitch. Are they use the same pitch? Oh. They use the same pitch, and I would say that yeah, how much bigger than a football pitch is it? I'd say it's longer than mm -hmm. a football pitch, um, and then it could be a small, a small bit wider, and there's like the forty-five halfway line 45 so and then there's the goals on each side okay and the way it works is if you so the goals have two posts that go sh like upright mm -hmm. and they're about maybe 10 meters or five meters tall on each side and if you kick the ball between the posts it's one point and if you score a goal like soccer it's three points uh, in the goal is three points yeah oh nice. and there's 15 players and on each side and 15 yeah, fifteen. Okay, that's why the pitches are also bigger, right? Yeah, so like you have like three, you have a, you have a, you have like three lines or two lines of defense, midfield, and then two lines of defense. Ah, okay. Yeah, and what do I want to say? So yeah, okay, I uh, just forgot the thought. And okay, that's really it was confusing for me a bit. I, I was like hurling, and then they have the, the bat, and then they have the other. No, this is with Gaelic football. I yeah. was I was pretty confused. So I just stayed with soccer. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like there's a whole variety of sports which you can do here. Because yeah. I don't know if I mentioned this to you 
like uh, a couple of days ago i i started with with a friend of mine with nicole um i started to go to uh muay thai mm. uh like gym or training center and i, I just like the irish uh, attitude there because in germany <laughs> this would never be possible you mm. just go in there and like the first training is always uh, for free and then just need to you go in there and then <laughs> they don't even give you like introductions you just dive into it do your one hour session on the bags and on the, in the in the in the in the boxing gym with a guided trainer like 25 people and then you leave mm -hmm. it's so so uh, yeah so cool i think because you you kind of just bump there bump in there do, do your training and then yeah and in germany i think that's way more not strict but yeah there are some prerequisites there yeah uh, like that's funny i uh, i was looking at a documentary um from vice or was there something else about golf in germany mm -hmm. you have to get a license before you can play golf yeah and at the first i was like that, that is crazy don't you need it over here no no license okay. like you can bring anyone on the golf course like and uh, well, really? not anyone but like there has to no. like you have to have a bag you have to have certain clothes on and like you have to have there's some, but it depends on where you go okay but the more i talk about like it's actually a good thing because like there's some parts of golf like you say in the like, if you do the get your license like mm -hmm. it it shows that like you're able to play so it's at, it's going to be quicker you're not going to be doing anything dangerous but then i also feel that like it stops some people getting into it but yeah it's like it's an interesting one i, don't, I wonder how it would work here you mean in germany no if if, if the license was here i think it's kind of uh, a barrier it a is a barrier to the sport because if you need a license and you need to also in germany it's a very expensive sport you know, if you want to play on the on the golf courses you have to pay like admissions like a year or fees a year yeah and is it over here yeah the same? it's not cheap here at all like yeah. um i spent quite a lot of money my personally on golf clubs and uh when i probably shouldn't have but i did but it's kind of the nature of the game and um, it's hopefully it's changing because it's like it is it like has like the kind of stigma of being an old man's game, rich rich person's game. But okay. I always try to bring like my friends like out in a shirt, just an old t shirt when I can go a pair of shorts and we just hit golf balls because like I didn't I fell in love with the game because like the progression and like your your no one's ever good at at the start. But sure. as you see yourself getting better, like you get addicted to like the progression. Which is why I love it and like I've I've introduced those my friends to it because I know that it'd be good for them like what about me? Oh, oh, don't worry, Alex. Next week, can you play? In, There's no. a, uh, we we could we'd have to do it on a Saturday. Okay, but it's there. There is a place here. Is Wait. it whole year? Do we play the whole year? You can do, but it's not very fun all year round. Like you could play today, but like yeah, I there, mean, mm -hmm. there's a par three course like right beside where we live. Maybe we should give it a go. I, I have I have the license back in Germany, like the license. But well, then we need to do it. What we need to do? It yeah, what would be would be cool, but. Yeah. I'm leaving in one and a half weeks, so yeah, maybe you're here next weekend, though. I'm here next weekend, yeah, last okay. weekend. Okay, well then I'll bring my golf clubs. And we'll go yeah, and let's we'll do, we'll do that next weekend. Just to to have some fun there, mm -hmm. and I want to see how you're you're getting on with the golf because I think you you're really good. I uh, I I don't know about the handicaps. You said like a nine or something. I don't know what what this means. Um, like handicap is like so. A golf course is eighteen holes. 18 holes the goal is to get it in the hole in as least amount of shots as possible exactly each hole has a designated number that you should get the the ball in the hole in okay. so it's either four three or five okay let's say one hole you play the first hole and the the goal is or the the metric is four yeah par four par four yeah so par equals number of shots like par is just the way of saying the metric okay and if it if you do like three shots and then you're in the hole then your handicap gets better or how is it yeah so if so if you have like you add up all the say all the powers of on every hole so one to 18 equals 72 yeah and that's how many shots like the course is designed to do so say you get a few holes where you do one better than four or five like you have say on a four you have a three yes. on a five you have a four mm -hmm. so at the end of it you could be two or three under and Ah, this is the minus stuff there yeah. always ah and gotcha. then and then if you're if it's worse then you're over and like 70 like like the average handicap in ireland 
is 18 or in the world is 18. Which you have is, nine. I have nine, yeah. That's pretty good. I, yeah. I did a lot, of, I did a lot of, I was obsessed with it for a long time. Okay, but I feel like, isn't it like this, You s get you tracked all the time? Yes. You know so, what I mean? Yeah, so the way it works is like 18, that number is added to your, to 72. And then that, and then, so say, say I go out and I'm meant to shoot 72 and mm -hmm. I shoot 100. I take away 18, which is the amount of shots I'm allowed. And then that brings it down to what? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, that that means that if I'm off nine and you're off twenty, for example, handicap, yeah. that we can have a fair game because like the handicaps will like work out the difference if they're correct. And it's a cool measurement. You always know. Obviously, you need to take into account how long this uh, guy or this girl is playing, but. It's a cool measurement to see firsthand uh, if you can compete with each other or play with each other, right? Yeah, I would assume. Uh, yeah, no, it is like, and my my friend Jamie, he's off three, and like, like it takes a Ooh. long time to get down that low, like, and like if you get down to zero, you go plus. So you have to every like when you finish a game, you have to add shots on because you're good, like. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's a inter My mom and dad both play as well, and my brother and my sister play for a long time. Like it's kind of. Yeah, like, and th they brought you also a bit into that sport, I would assume. They right? did, and um, don't don't. I kind of got into it because uh, I started working in a golf club. I just got a job there years ago, and I kind of discovered the passion for it then. Like, and then that kind of led me down the road. I love to open my own business related to golf someday. Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, maybe. So we're quite in a lot of time. Maybe my one of the final questions now. You just mentioned you want to maybe build a business around it. What are your personal goals for like let's say the next three years? If you if you see yourself in three years, what what do you want your life to look like? What what will you want to accomplish? If you could even if you have an idea what's what's going on because you also have like a bit of um yeah next steps going on and mm. what do you think? My next three years. Um, like there's many things I'd like like if I could picture myself right now yes. in three, three years from now I would like to see myself healthy obviously I would like to have a, a like money isn't everything to me but I would like to have like some sort of financial security like, I gotcha um, I would also like my, my dream is to like like to own my own business I, don't, I, I would see myself more as an entrepreneur than, a, than like working I like working on my for myself. Cool, because mm -hmm. I like the progress you make. Uh, car, and and maybe having li having lived abroad at one stage. Okay, cool. That would be my five things. Five things, perfect. I think that's our healthy and uh, yeah, yeah, cool goals, which kind of enhance your day to day life. And you you did your first steps in in, in having businesses. Tried some stuff out, doing your web uh, web design yeah. at the yeah. moment. Yeah. And yeah, I feel like you what I learned from you is you have a way more you have a you have the business thoughts. If you hear something or if you if we talked about it you could say, Oh, we could use this like this, we could do some business cases around that and mm. I was more I was not thinking like this, so this is what I what I learned from you a lot to, to think about more in these terms because can you remember the last discussion we had when you do, did your website? And I was like, yeah, I, I was into this as well. And you said, yeah, you should start some some stuff around this as well because we had like cool conversations. I was like, yeah, wait a minute, why not just use your skills or also teach your skills? There's so much to, 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 to do. And yeah, this gave me a whole new perspective. So that was really cool. Well, I'm just glad that, that I could help with something because you've helped me with many things. And we talk about just like the way you go about your life, the way you see things has opened my eyes to maybe, okay, maybe I can do things differently as well. Yeah. And like you're, you're, you're very talented at what you do, you're passionate. And like the website that you showed me that you made, I was blown away by <laughs> That was very good. So it'd be, it'd be a shame not to use your skills that you have. Yeah. So that's cool. And we also have like similar, similar paths maybe to, to go. And yeah, so we have like, Oh man, we have over an hour. That's cool. And so first of all, thanks a lot that you ca came on today. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I hope because it was your first time on any yeah. of these occasions, right? You didn't do a podcast before. <laughs> take, take the, the box. Take, take the off the book and listen. Out. No, I hope you enjoyed it as well. And yeah. Thank you very much for having me, Alex. I, yeah. 
I enjoyed it. I was a bit nervous at the start. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, me too. I, was, I think that's that's a normal thing to to be nervous at, at the yeah. start. But hopefully it was not. No, I think we got on the course of it. Yeah, yeah. I hope we, we might have to have a second episode. Yeah, yeah that I was uh, what I wanted to say. So think about moving in a direction or going abroad in a direction near to Germany. Yeah, and then we will shoot that new episode because I don't yes. know if I be back soon in Ireland. You know what I mean? I think it would be appropriate for me to go next. You know, yeah. you've, you've spent enough time in Ireland, I think, for a while. So exactly. I, w I would like to go experience by Germany. Yeah. So just as a, as a conclusion here, thanks again. And I wish you all the best for your upcoming years or your, for, for the next time. And I hope you can accomplish all of the goals. I'm sure you will. I'll try my best. You try your best. And yeah, so as you said, we should do also a next episode somewhere or some some place and i would definitely uh, appreciate that and i think it would also it was really cool for for the audience for the podcast audience to see how do irish people think what do they do yeah we, we laid down a bit of differences between ireland and germany and i feel like that's that's also interesting because as you said most of the things or a lot of things we only take for or we just take for granted and if you have experience like this you you kind of enhance this and yeah so man all the best you want to say anything at the at the end um thanks for having me on and uh i'll keep it short thanks for i already said that so we'll no just, worries we'll just, we'll just leave it there <laughs> yeah. famous last words yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so see you at the next episode and yeah have a good day bye bye Boom. that was good man, man. <laughs>